Greetings and welcome to episode 14 of the Math Olympiad lecture series. Today we will be looking at power sums and focusing on specifically the sum of squares and the sum of cubes. Before I begin today's lecture, I want to make a quick advert of a project I've been working on. I've been trying to build an interactive e-textbook to help with the learning of mathematics in this post-COVID environment. There will be applets to demonstrate various concepts, visualize ideas, as well as set randomized self-assessment quizzes. It's completely free of charge in its infancy stage, but growing daily. Do check it out using this QR code on the screen or in the info section below. If you have any feedback or ideas for the textbook, feel free to comment in the comment section below. And we're back to the lecture. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to find the sum of squares and the sum of cubes, and to be able to apply these two formulas to solve various problems. Let's jump straight in with a question involving squares. Count the total number of squares in this 4x4 grid. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. A way to solve this problem is to make a list to count the different types of squares. If we just look at the one by one squares, there is a total of 16 of them. If we count the two by two squares, there are nine of them. The three by three squares, there are four, and there's just one large four by four square. All in all, the total number of squares comes up to one plus four plus nine plus 16 which is the sum of squares from 1 to 4. This gives us 30. So, did you get the answer? Let's rewind the clock. Let's go back to question 1 again. What if in an alternate universe, that instead of a 4x4 four four square, we have to solve this but for a 99 by 99 square? How would this have gone? Based on our previous solution, we would just end up with the sum of squares from 1 to 99. But is there a formula to shortcut this calculation? Glad you asked! This is where the power sum formulas come in. In lecture 11, we've already covered the sum of natural numbers under the arithmetic progression. Today, we're going to examine the sum of squares formula and the sum of cubes formula. The traditional proof is the method of induction. The basic idea is you let Pn be the proposition that you want to prove. Then you check for the case of n equals to 1. You then assume that the case n equals to a is also true. Then you try to prove for the case of n equals to a plus 1. After some algebraic manipulation, you can show that the case of n equals to a plus 1 is true. Since P1 is true and PA is true implies that PA plus 1 is true, we can conclude that PN must be true for all n that are positive integers. But I'm not a big fan of induction. It feels rather tautological in nature to assume something is true in order to prove that it is true. While it works, is there a more elegant and direct proof? Well, glad that you asked. The proof I'm going to show you today is the method of difference. First, we need to recall the cubic expansion covered in the last lecture on binomial theorem. I'm going to apply this cubic expansion for 0 plus 1 cube, and I'm going to keep expanding 1 plus 1 cube, 2 plus 1 cube, all the way to n plus 1 cube. Now I'm going to remove the first column and tally up the sum of cubes circled in red on the left as well as tally up the sum of cubes circled in blue on the right. We can remove the common terms on both sides, and that just leaves us n plus 1 cube on the left-hand side. But we are not done. There are three more sets of terms we still need to collect. The next column circled in red, that's just 3 times the sum of squares. The next column circled in blue, that's just 3 times the sum of natural numbers from 1 to n. And in the last column, that's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, n plus 1 times. Since both sides must be equal, 
Our aim here now is to make the sum of squares the subject. Let's do some housekeeping before we continue. Ah, much better. Let's do a binomial expansion on the left-hand side. We are going to keep the red term as 3 times the sum of squares. For the blue term, that's 3 times the sum of natural numbers. So we can replace it with the formula n times n plus 1 over 2. And we'll keep the n plus 1 for now. But we need to further simplify this expression. Let's bring the n plus 1 term over. Next, we multiply both sides by 2. Bring the 3n squared plus 3n term over. Divide both sides by 6. And lastly, we just need to factorize the numerator. And voila, we have the proof for the sum of squares. After this long detour, let's go back to that alternate universe question. We can now evaluate this sum using our sum of square formula. This will give us a result of 328,350. So, did you get the answer? Moving on to question 2. Let's now take the sum of squares, but I now only want the squares of the odd numbers from 1 to 99. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's begin by reframing this problem. Instead of thinking of the sum of odd squares, let's think of it as the sum of all squares, and we will deduct away the even squares later. We can rewrite this in summation notation. We can factorize out the 4 from the second square. This will give us the sum of squares from 1 to 99, deducting 4 times the sum of squares from 1 to 49. Using our sum of square formula, we will get a result of 166,650. An alternative solution is to express odd numbers as 2n minus 1. We will expand the 2n minus 1 square. Then we will evaluate each term separately. You will get the same answer. So, did you get the answer? Moving on to question 3. A student wrote down the following 24 numbers on the board. Two numbers are randomly picked and their sum is computed. The two numbers picked will be replaced by the new sum. If this process is repeated over and over until one number is left, what is the largest possible value left? What this means is that if 3 cubed and 5 cubed are picked, both numbers are erased and the number 152 is added. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So the trick to this is to try to solve a simpler problem to see if we can spot a pattern. Let's say we only have 4 cubic numbers instead. If I were to randomly pick, say, 2 cubed and 4 cubed, the new sequence would be 1 cubed, 3 cubed, 2 cubed plus 4 cubed. Let's pick 2 more cubes. Let's say I pick 1 cubed and 3 cubed. This will give me 2 terms left. If I run the algorithm one more time, I'm just getting the sum of cubes from 1 to 4. So, it turns out that this entire question is just a long convoluted scam. It's just here to ask us to add up the sum of cubes from 1 to 24. So, using the formula, we get the result of 90,000. So, did you get the answer? Without further ado, here are today's extension problems. The solutions to the last lecture's extension problems will be uploaded into the info section of the previous lecture. Here's problem 1 and 2. Here's problem number 3. Problem number 4. And problem 5 and 6. The solutions to these extension problems will be posted in the info section after lecture 15 is out. With that, we have come to the end of episode 14. Stay tuned to episode 15 where we will explore partial fractions and telescopic sums. Have a good day of learning. Do like this video and subscribe to the channel for more math-related videos.